So good morning guys, I hope everyone's doing well. Hope you all had a good weekend and all that. Uh, I haven't been able to film much lately, I haven't been on jobs that I can really do that on, but today I'm gonna, um, just going out to change out a solenoid valve this morning. It's, um, it's making noise, it's chattering here and there, so the valve's starting to go. So we're just gonna change that out. Should be a nice, decent little job. It's indoors, it's kind of crappy out today, so. It'll be pretty good, so figured I'd take you guys along and um, just show you a quick, uh, easy solenoid valve replacement. All right, thank you. Okay, here we are, getting into the freezer. Very tight in here, real short ceilings. I gotta get around this shelf here to get over to the solenoid valve. So I got that pulled out. Luckily I'm skinny, so I can crawl up into those places. And there we are, in here. I can't see it that well. Let me get some light in here. I gotta change out this solenoid valve. It's chattering when this unit shuts off on temp. When it starts to pump down and when it comes back on, it buzzes and chatters. So inside the body here, it's going bad. The plunger in there. So we're gonna get this out. Very tight quarters in here. I gotta get the torch in here and everything and be careful. And I'll change this out and put a new coil on it as well. I wanted to point out, guys, on a new solenoid valve, which I'm sure most of you know, but some may not, you gotta pay attention. See where that says in? These, these valves are directional. You can't go backwards, they won't work right. They'll either block up or just won't work at all. And also, these ones that have this little stem here, always make sure that is wound all the way out counterclockwise if that's in even a bit it can keep this valve open and the solenoid could possibly leak by even when it's not calling and it will keep the unit running and believe it or not I've seen many of these put in backwards I think I even did it a few times a couple times back in the day not knowing when I was young and just getting into the business but I've seen them put in backwards from the factory as well so I just wanted to make note of that real quick guys and as with the case, with this uh, particular coil, this is a spool on MKC-1. It's dual voltage. You can wire it for 120 or 230. Okay, so they usually come with a little diagram. You can see right here, 208, 240. Red and yellow have to be together. Black and blue are your lines. So you just wire it together like that. If they're wired wrong, you bring 230 to 120, you're gonna cook the valve. I've seen it happen. These things will melt right up. We've seen that happen a bunch of times. Um, wired wrong by electricians or from the factory and nobody checked or, who, or whatever. So these are the dual voltage ones. We use these a lot. Um, you can get regular ones that, you know, just whatever, 121s or 230, but the dual voltage are good, especially in the bind, because um, you can use them anywhere pretty much, so. Just wanted to show you guys that also. So here's the new valve, all in guys. Sorry about the angles here, it's very, very tight tight in here. I got like no room here. I can't even stand up straight, the box is so short. But um, that's it, new valve in, connections made. The in is over there, I don't know if you can see it, but that's in. In is always toward your evaporator and expansion valve. Okay, your liquid line coming in. That's gonna be feeding your valve and your coil. All right, so I'm gonna get this on a vacuum. Now, uh, start it up in a little bit. So this one's the freezer here, guys. Just a little one, little ice cream freezer. See, we're already back down to zero degrees. They only want these around zero to minus five. They don't want the ice cream too hard for them scooping it after, so. This is the unit here, it's actually just pumped down now. So this is a water cooled unit, it's hooked up to their glycol chiller as well that does their ice cream machines upstairs. So very simple basic unit, there's the one for the cooler above it, walk-in coolers over there. But I just wanted to finish it up, uh, everything's working good, said we just shut off on temp, so we're looking good. Thanks for watching guys. So just want to follow up on that call. Um Real quick, guys, just so you don't think I forgot a step. I did uh, put that on a nice vacuum and leak checked and all that. Everything worked out fine. 
Um, I couldn't film that part. The customer was down in the basement there with me, so, you know, I didn't want to be filming and talking in front of the customer, but just wanted to let you know that was a step in the process. And then, uh, like I said, opened up the receiver, started it up, let her pull down the temp. Cycling fine, no more noise in the valve. And that's it. Not too bad of a job. Nice little one for today. Um, I don't know what's next. I'm heading to a supply house now to return return a couple parts that we didn't need for a job. So see if anything happens after that. If not, we'll go home. But um, said, hope all, everyone's doing well and stay on the grind. And uh, thanks for watching, guys.